Okay, if you've been following along the uh, series of tutorials, you see that we're getting pretty far along. We've actually got the better part of our document with all the key components working uh, effectively uh, to manage uh, any changes or edits that you might want to do. So th there's a couple other things that we need to do. We need to, to package up the document a little bit better. Uh, and things like uh, page numbers, uh, headers and footers, particularly if you have any uh, appendices, uh, or annexes uh, added, uh, as well as we need to uh, separate our format from our, our uh, main body so that we can get page numbering working uh, properly uh, on that section versus the other section. So uh, let's quickly go through that. I think we could do that in a few minutes and uh, see if we can get this document starting to look uh, the way it needs to be for uh, our main content, which is, of course, still to be added. Okay, so I've got the, the document open, uh, looking at the table of contents, and we've got a couple chapters, as uh, you recall, and going through. So what we really want to do is look at the headers and the footers uh, and the page numbering. And to do that, we have to understand section breaks, because wherever we want the headers and the footers to match the headers and the footers all through the document, that's fairly easy. But if we want different headers and footers, or if we want different page numbering from one section to another, we need to insert a section break. And we're going to have to do that here, is to insert a, a section break. So where do we need a section break? So wh why don't we start at the back and let's add an appendice. Uh, and th there's very few uh, research documents that don't have some kind of an appendix to contain the, the bulk of the data that, that we're, uh, or summary of the data that we're, we're using in our analysis. So let's do that. Um, we want to get to the back and I'm going to go to a new page. So I'm going to do it without the section break, just to show what, um, uh, no, forget that. So, so if we're going to put an appendix, we need to have a section break <clears throat> because we're going to have to have headers and footers different from what they were before. So I'm going to insert layout breaks and here I'm going to have a section break and we're going to start in the next page. And so if I scroll back up just to see what it's done, we can see here we have the equivalent of a page break, but it's actually a section break. And that gives us more control as to having it look differently before it or after. A uh, section break would be useful to us if we, say, wanted to uh, change the page layout, and have a landscape section. Maybe we have an appendix that's a landscape section. We would need a section break in order to do that. Otherwise, it, it would change the, make the change through the whole document. So now we're down into this section, and if I go to my, uh, well, actually, let's put in a heading. Let's say that this is Appendix 1, and um, it is bulk data. Uh, and I'm not going to worry about the content beyond that. Okay. So if we go to our Insert tab, so we're in Home, we go to our Insert tab, we have our headers and our footers here. So let's go to our header to start with. Oh, single click, uh, and, and it'll offer you some uh, generic ones or, or we can uh, make our own. Uh, we're just gonna choose a blank one and set it up ourselves. So we're in here and notice this says header for section two um, and it is currently tagged as the same as previous because this is linked to previous up here. We don't want the header to be the same as in the first section. That's why we inserted a section break. So let's unclick that and unlink it. Uh, we can go link it up later and just show you what it would do. And let's put some text in our header. So appendix one, uh, say bulk data and what a header is is it's a top of, top of the page which is going to show up identical to every page within that section and so you know in a lot of business documents you might put a date and, and that type of thing uh, we're just going to do this right here and you're going to want to format that uh, you know set up a style appropriate to whatever you want your header to, to look like and 
Then we can go down to the footer. So easy way is just go to footer down here. Notice that it is still same as previous. Um, and we probably don't want that. And let's say we want to insert a page number. Ah, and we insert a page number and at the bottom of the page, we, we want it centered and it's going to put the page number in there. And if that's not exactly what we want to look at, just change the style and it's going to update itself to look exactly like what you want. Now, what you'll see here is that that's page seven. And normally when we're doing an appendix, we want to restart the uh, page number. Uh, so as you see, we're up in appendix one. So we probably want this to be one dash and then the page number of the section. So let's double click on, right click on that. Uh, to, to, uh, format page numbers and what we want to do is not choose continuous from another section but restart it at one and there we go we have one dash one now another common thing that you might see is that you also want to indicate the total number of pages uh, in it and so we can do that and uh, we can do that very specifically by inserting a field so, so uh, we're up in our insert. We want to insert that field and the place where we can find that is in our quick parts and really document properties. So we want to do a field and we have a lot of information that we could choose to do. So in this case, we want to do uh, our section, number of pages in a section, section pages. And we'll just say, okay. And right now, because we have a single page, it's going to go one of one. So if we're, we're still within the same section, let's go up to the main body. We can just get out of the headers and footers by uh, double clicking in here. So if we enter another page and we look down, we see now that it is two of two or one of two. And so we have a working page number. It is appendix one, page one of two or one to uh, two of two. Now, to, to get this working, let's go back into our main document and say, okay, well, we also want the page numbers in our main document. So let's do that again. So inserting page numbers, we'll bring it down bottom of page, uh, page numbers here. So we can do that. And in this case, we can go of, and we're going to insert once again, uh, go over to quick parts and put field and again, we have to stick to the section, on the section pages, and we hit OK. Now, we don't actually have six pages in this section because the, well, we do have six pages in the section, but we don't want to have six pages in this section because the formatter, the table of contents and list of figures, quite frankly, should be in a different section. And that would reduce this number down to uh, probably four for now. So let's go up and insert a section break after our list of figures. There's our list of figures. Uh, let's get out of the headers and footers. And so after that, instead of a page break, we actually want to have a section break. So we'll erase the page break, insert, uh, sorry, layout breaks, uh, page break, next page. So it inserts the equivalent of a page break, but it's also a section break. Now, because we did that, what you're seeing, if we go in here, so in this one, uh, let's go down to the footer where we have some actual material in there and you see it's the same as previous. So we want to unlink those. And now you also notice that it updated the total number of pages because there's fewer pages now in that section. And when we come up here, typically in the format we don't use Arabic numerals to indicate the page number. We use small Roman numerals and we don't normally indicate the total number of pages. So let's remove this and say insert page number, bottom of page, middle of page. But in this case, we're going to format page numbers and the number format we're going to choose is the Roman numerals, small Roman numerals. And we're good there. 
And so now we have, let's get out of the, we see we're getting the Roman numerals in the formatter, one, two, and then, oh, it's three or four. So we've got an issue there is we have to restart the numbering in that section. Uh, so we'll highlight it, right click, uh, format page numbers, and we're going to again start at one for this section and get out. So we have added page numbers to our formatter in its own section. So we have Roman numeral page numbers there. In the main body or the main chapters, we have uh, Arabic numerals and it's also indicating the total number of pages in this section. And for any appendices we could uh, need to add, uh, we've now got the equivalent of a template, if you will, where we can put in our appendix. In this case, we have appendix one and an appropriate page numbering system for appendix one. So with that done, so the understanding of section breaks and how those become really important if you're having any shift of formatting or layout from one section to the next, including any page numbering uh, differences and how to put in a, a page number and the different types of formats that you might uh, need for that page number, depending on whether you're in the format or in the main body or in an appendix. So uh, with that, we're almost done. Uh, there's a whole bunch of other things we can get MS Word to do for us, but we've got most of the key things for a technical document uh, already sort of set up for us.